This cooling fan was mentioned back in vault log number 57. I ordered it from eBay and uh, got it uh, quite quickly to Romania because it was shipped from the uh, United Kingdom. But you can also find these with shipping from China or Italy, so whatever works best for you. Since I got it, it's been staying on a corner on my uh, working bench, waiting to be installed in my Rigol DS1054Z because that is the plan to upgrade the stock cooling fan inside the oscilloscope for this uh, Gilded Silent 5, which should make less noise. Everyone knows this is a great scope for the money, but as usual, test equipment doesn't use the best solution in terms of uh, cooling fans and associated hardware. They care mostly about keeping the unit cool and not about the noise that the unit makes, because usually these are used in environments where multiple equipment is run at the same time and the noise level is already high, so it doesn't matter much if a small 50mm fan is adding noise. But it's a totally different story for us hobbyists that are using these pieces of equipment indoor in our homes. We usually want units with passive cooling or with silent fans. This replacement is the same size 50 by 50 by 15 millimeters, same RPM, it takes the same voltage and same amount of power while pushing a similar volume of air. So it's basically a good candidate for this upgrade. There are several other videos on YouTube with people showing how they install this fan on their uh, oscilloscopes. I think I first saw it mentioned on the EEV blog forum, but I don't remember the exact thread or the name of the user who mentioned it. I'm not expecting a massive improvement in, in noise and uh, I was discussing this over email with one of my viewers because part of the audible noise is made by the fan assembly and blaze themselves but part is made by the air turbulence passing uh, through the vents in the metal and plastic enclosure of the oscilloscopes and there isn't much we can do about those. I'm not going to start butchering my oscilloscope by making additional holes and cuts into the enclosure. Before we get started, we are going to get some measurements of noise levels and for that I'm using my tablet with an app installed from the Play Store. So the scope with the original fan, we're getting about 54 dB uh, average noise measurement and uh, but for the second test after we mount the new fan, I'm going to keep the exact same position uh, for the scope and for the tablet to uh, get a comparable measurement. Next step is to carefully remove this warranty sticker from the scope. I think I'm almost out of the uh, two year warranty on this unit, but I just want to see if I can successfully remove this sticker without damaging it. I'm going to heat the label using this uh, hair dryer just to soften the, the glue a little bit and then I'm going to try and insert this very thin piece of plastic from, from this anti-static ESD bag uh, under the label and carefully work my way around it until I have all the sticker uh, removed. So as you can see it's it's working I think. I think I'm doing a good job here. I'm going to apply a little bit more heat because it was very easy when it was hot. Now I'm going to leave this, leave this piece of plastic in here and I'm going to remove this uh, back cover from the scope. It looks like I only have to remove these two screws. Yeah, and there are another two screws under the handle. Now 
of the cover comes off. This is what I was talking about. Um, there might be a lot of air turbulence caused by these uh, metal fins and uh, the actual plastic grill from this side of the case. So if the air passes through this uh, plastic grill, it might create more noise than the actual fan itself. But there is very little we can do about this. I'm not going to start to cut the, the original enclosure. So now I'm guessing I have a bunch of uh, screws to remove uh, before I can uh, take off this uh, metal chassis. It's nice that they use the uh, Torx screws on this um, uh, chassis because uh, these are uh, more resistant to tear. I think we need uh, to also remove these ones from the outside. So in total 11 screws have been removed from this metal chassis before being able to disconnect it. Oh, and it looks like I, we also need to disconnect this uh, BNC. This replacement fan comes with a 3-pin uh, three, three connector, meaning it's got either a TACO signal for sensing the RPM or a PWM pin for controlling its speed. It could be either, but most likely in this case, an RPM sense pin. I have figured out the uh, pin out and uh, pin 1 which is uh, right here is ground, pin 2 is a VCC and pin 3 is the sense pin when you look at it from this direction with the uh, notches facing down. Now I'm going to try and find a matching 2 pin connector to use on the new fan because ideally I want to preserve the original fan wire intact. I don't want to cut its connector and use it on the new one. And luckily I was able to find the matching 2 pin JST connector from this analog dummy load shown in a previous video. So these are exactly the same size. So now I'm going to attach this 2 pin connector to the wires of this fan, uh, keeping approximately the same length of wire. So to make sure you're soldering this uh, cooling fan correctly, uh, pin 1 is ground and that is the wire which has the writing on it. And if you follow that wire up to the connection point, it's the leftmost pin on the uh, small PCB inside the cooling fan. So that is our negative wire that we need to solder to the uh, black wire of our connector. Next pin is our positive wire. And it's the middle on this uh, three pin fan. Okay, so now let's install our new fan using the same screws. You might need to use a bit of force on these uh, screws because they are uh, these uh, self-tapper type. Another important aspect I uh, should mention is the direction of the airflow. This uh, original Sunon fan had the direction marked with this arrow, so the air flows in that direction through the cooling fan. The uh, replacement silent fan didn't have the direction marked, but these fans usually blow air through this uh, side where there is a, a small grill. 
So uh, I actually checked the uh, replacement fan and it was blowing air in the same direction. And it's important to uh, follow and mount your replacing fan uh, with the uh, exact same airflow direction because the designers of this enclosure might have taken that into account to ensure proper cooling of the insides of this machine. So in this case, air is sucked in through this left side, passes through over the uh, power supply and then is exhausted at this uh, right side. So now we're ready to reassemble the scope. I'm going to start by connecting the uh, fan. and the power supply connector And the metal chassis slides back on, no problem. The two screws behind the uh, plastic handle are metal threaded screws and the ones from the bottom are self tappers, just remember that when putting it back together. And as you can see the warranty label hasn't been affected, it's in good shape. So with the original fan we were getting about 54 dBs on average. Now the scope is running with the silent fan installed, let's reset our sound meter and see what kind of uh, noise figure we're getting on average. So now we're getting about 45 dBs on average and uh, that's about 9 dB down in noise level with the new fan and it's uh, very audible, the difference is notable, I can hear the scope is much quieter now, so it's even better than I was expecting. I'm quite happy with this mode, I highly encourage you to do so on your own oscilloscope, you will be happy with the results, the equipment is much quieter now. And you will find a link in the description for purchasing this uh, Gelit 5 silent fan from eBay. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the like button and I will see you next time.